The next topic that we're going to have to focus on is learning the different properties now that we went through the definition. The first property I want to introduce is something called the product rule. Now the product rule says if you're multiplying two of the same base, we can simplify by keeping the same base and just adding the exponent. So the first thing you got to do is recognize what the bases are. That's what we talked about in the definition work. Remember, to find what the base is, take the exponent and see what's the first thing it touches. Notice it touches the x here. So the base here is the x. Remember, it's what's directly in front of it, not what's behind it. So this 3 doesn't apply to the parentheses, it applies to the x. This 2 applies to the x. So notice the bases are the same. When the bases are the same, we can keep the same base, x, but add the exponents, 3 plus 2. And we know that 3 plus 2 will give us x to the fifth. How does this work out? Why does it work like this? Well, if I wrote it in exponential format, this 3 applies to the x. That means I have to write this base out three times. One, two, three. This two applies to this base of x. That means I have to write that base out two times. So when you count how many x's that there are, one, two, three, four, five. That's how we get x to the fifth. Even though this is a multiplication symbol, you do not multiply exponents. Product rule says when you have the same base, you always add exponents. This is a little tricky for some people because they think product, multiplication. But what this is really saying is that your bases are being multiplied, not necessarily your exponents. Okay? So this is what... The product rule. When you're multiplying like bases, we tell you keep the same like base, add the exponents right, of the like base, and then if they have any coefficients, then you're going to multiply them out. So let's do another problem with a problem that has coefficients. What happens if we have 3a to the 4th? times 5a to the 7. A little bit more trickier. But the first thing that you always want to do is make sure in your mind you know what the base is. So take that exponent and see what's the first thing it touches. Boom. The a. So the base is only a. It's not 3a. It's just the one item that's directly in front of it. And here, what's the base? Just A, not the 5. Because the 7 can only apply to the one item that's directly in front of it. Remember, if I want it to apply to both of them, it has to hit a set of parentheses first, which it didn't. So these are my like bases. A, A. So if I'm using the product rule, a, a, keep that same like base, a. What do I do with the exponents? 4 and 7. You add. So 4 plus 7, we get 11. Now what do we do with these coefficients? We multiply. 3 times 5 is 15. Why does this work out to be 15a to the 11th? Well, if you want to rewrite these into what we call factored form, this 4 only applies to the a. So I need 1, 2, 3, 4. But only 1, 3. This 7 applies only to the a. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can see why we like this rule, because I don't have to draw it out every single time, because imagine this is a to the 20th. Ugh. 
and then we only need one five. Because this is multiplication, we can do this in any order. Remember, the commutative property says it doesn't matter if I do seven times eight times one, or one times seven and eight, you can mix it up. So what I wanna do is mix it up and put the five over here. And then I have one, two, three, four A's. And then these seven A's. And then all you have to do is say three times five, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you can see how it's easier just to say multiply the coefficients separately from your bases. Okay, so that's why these rules work. Keep the same like base, add the exponents of the like base and then multiply any coefficients. While we're here, let us now focus on the quotient rule. The quotient rule, as the name implies, quotient, that means you're dividing things. When dividing like bases, you wanna keep that same like base, but instead of adding the exponents, notice we're gonna subtract the exponents. Now, when you subtract exponents, it does matter what order you do them in. Addition, it doesn't matter if we did four plus seven or seven plus four, you get 11. But with subtraction, you do have to pay attention. If you do four minus seven, you get a negative three. But if you put the seven in front, seven minus four, you get a positive three. So we gotta be careful. When you subtract like bases, you always do the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. We'll eventually learn it a little different as thinking of these two questions. When you have a quotient rule, you have a fraction bar. That means you have a numerator, a top, and a denominator, a bottom. Usually when we hit the quotient rule, I usually ask instead of top exponent minus bottom exponent, I usually ask you, where do you have more of those bases? Do you have more on top or do you have more on the bottom? If you have more on top, you keep the base on top. If you have more on the bottom, you keep the base at the bottom. And then once you do that, then you can just subtract the exponents. You don't have to worry about top or bottom. You just do bigger number minus smaller number. Okay? And then of course, if you had any coefficients, we're gonna have to simplify and reduce. Why we say reduce is because remember, you're gonna have it as a fraction, division, fraction. So we reduce um, coefficients. So let's go over and give you some examples of what the quotient rule would look like. So I asked if you have x to the fourth over x cubed. Well, here what you want to do is just pay attention to what the base is. So if you don't know the base, just drop your line. Base is x. Drop. Base is x. So we have like bases x's. So then to simplify, we keep that same like base x. But then we subtract top exponent minus bottom exponent. Four minus three. Remember, you can't do three minus four or you get a negative one. You have to do top minus bottom. And when you subtract, you get x to the first. Now, do you need to write that one in? No. What you're gonna learn is this. When you have any letter or number, there's always an understood exponent of one, okay? Just like when we said any variable, there's an understood exponent of one. Well, now you know that for letters, variables, 
and constants or coefficients that there are understood exponents of one. So x to the first just means that we need one x. So you can write it as just x. Let's do some more of these guys. Let's look for one that's a little bit more complicated than this. Let's put some coefficients. Maybe we'll do that. How about if we had 3z to the 7 over 9z to the 4. So I added just some coefficients. The first thing you want to do is see if you have any like bases. If you don't know what your base is, let's draw a little line if that helps you. This 7 applies only to the z. So see how I'm only underlining the z? I didn't underline the 3, just the z, because that's my base. This 4, what's the first thing it touches? The letter z. So my base is only z. So it doesn't matter that this is a 3 and a 9. My bases are just z and z. They match. When they match, we can keep the same z. Okay? So we have 7 on top. 4 at the bottom. So top minus bottom. This is where we're going to get z cubed. Now how about this? 3 ninths. What do we do with those? We're going to reduce. When you have 3 over 9, you know how to reduce a fraction. Remember how we talked about factoring? If you wrote this in factored format, it's a 3. When you factor out 9, it's 3 times 3. When you have a 3 on top and a 3 on the bottom, they cancel out. If there's nothing left on top, there's always an understood 1. There's nothing left at the bottom, there's an understood 1. So when you have this, 1 third would be your coefficient. Now, some people keep it like this. If you had written your answer like this and just put the 3 at the bottom, they're the same thing. Okay? You might be saying, how these are the same thing? Well, some people will handle the problem and rewrite it and not use the quotient rule, but they'll rewrite it in what we call factored format. You should know by now how to write this in factored format. This 7 means I need the z's written out 7 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then 3, you can't factor it out, so I just put a 3 there. And it's all understood as multiplication. 9, you can factor it out as 3 times 3. And this 4 only applies to the z, so I take that z and write it out 4 times. When you do it in factored format, then we always told you that if you have one factor on top that matches the same factor at the bottom, you can cancel out on a one-to-one -one ratio. So one three on top matches one three at the bottom. One z on top matches one at the bottom. Z with a z, as long as it's something on top that cancels out the same thing at the bottom. Match, match. Notice what's left over that you couldn't cross out. There is an extra 3 at the bottom, and there is these z's extra on top. So how many z's are extra on top? Three of them. And what's extra on the bottom for numbers? Three. That's how some people write their answer like this. This and this are equivalent. Some people do it like this because they do the quotient rule, top exponent minus bottom exponent, and then reduce the fraction, or others will draw it out. But these and these are equivalent. Let me show you just one more of the harder problems for product and quotient, and then that be it for this little mini video. So what happens if you have multiple items in 
that you're multiplying or multiple items that you're dividing. So let's do a harder quotient and a harder product rule. We'll, still work, we'll start with the product rule first. 5a squared b c cubed times 7a B, three. Let's say you had this, okay? More than just one ladder. So we were doing ones that had just one ladder and one coefficient. Well, now you can see this has three ladders or three variables and one coefficient. And this has two ladders or two variables and one coefficient. Well, your first step is that we realize that we're multiplying Okay, remember the parentheses, multiplication. What you want to do is see if you have any like basis first. Notice that we do. Remember, this 2 only applies to the A. This 3 only applies to the C. Now notice this B doesn't have an exponent. Well, we always told you that there's an understood exponent. So you can slip it in for any letter. Okay. And this is a coefficient. This 5 only applies to the A. So that's one base. This 3 only applies to the B. That's another base. Do you have any like bases? Yes. A's, A's. They match. B's, these, they match. So when you have multiply, remember parentheses is multiplication, like bases, we can simplify. Now I don't want to write this all out in factored format, but you could. 5AA B C C C. And then this would be 7 A A A A A B B B. And then you can count them all up. Or the product rule says. A's with A's. Two here, five here. Add them, you have seven. One B here, three here. Add them, four of them. Now this C, you can just bring down. Because there's no other C's. Now what do we do with these coefficients? Well, for right now, I'll bring them down. But once we did these, then we said the last step is to multiply any coefficients. Why did I move the seven in front? Because we told you the commutative property, I could put that factor anywhere. So bring it up to the front with the other coefficient. Multiply and you get 35a to the seven, b to the fourth, c cubed. That's your final answer. Remember how I did this? I said, keep the same like base, so that's why I did A's with A's and B's with B's. I add the exponents of those like bases. Remember, A was 2 and a 5. That's how I got 7. And once I did all those, then I just multiply any coefficients, the 5 and the 7. Okay. Let's do one more where it's a complicated quotient. Okay. Let's do... Now, I know a lot of times you're tempted because you see a fraction, you think division. And I know some of you are looking here and saying, 6 divided by 3, that means it's y squared. And 3 divided by 1 is x to the third. Remember, quotient rule does not say divide. It says you subtract exponents. So be careful. It's very tempting to say 6, 3, 6 divided by 3 because you see a fraction bar and think it's 2. It's not. 
the first thing you wanna do is see if you have any like bases. So remember, this three applies to only the X, the one item that's directly in front of it. This six applies to the Y. This Z, hmm, you don't see an exponent. Remember, there's an understood exponent of one. So this one only applies to the Z. Remember, this is a coefficient. This is a coefficient. Ooh, notice this x doesn't have anything. You can slip in a one and say, this one only applies to the x, and this three only applies to the y. Now that I know I have some like bases, x's was x's, y's was y's, remember what we said? We keep these same like bases. So we're gonna keep the x, we're gonna keep the y, we're gonna keep the z, all right? But for the x's, to simplify, top exponent minus bottom exponent. So three minus one. For the y's, top exponent minus bottom exponent. Six minus three. And the z, there's nothing to subtract. So we'll just keep it the one. Now when you clean this up, you know that 3 minus 1 is x squared. 6 minus 3 is 3 of the y's. And then that, just bring down. Do you need to put the 1 here? No, because it's understood that there's a 1 there. Now that we at least took care of the same bases, what about the coefficients? 10 over 4. You can reduce that. Remember, 10, if you put it in factored form, is 2 times 5. 4 is 2 times 2. When I factor something out, I'm trying to think of any prime numbers. Prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 23. There's a whole list of them. That means you cannot break them down any further. Okay? So here, 2 and 2 can cancel out, leaving you with 5 halves. So my coefficient is 5 over 2. Now some people like to keep their answer like this, or others, because they did it the factored way, they say 5, 2, where do you have more x's? So this is where sometimes I'm going to be talking about Ask yourself those two questions. Where do I have more x's? I have three on top versus one on the bottom. So I have more x's on top. So I put the x. See how I have it on top in the numerator? By how many more? Three versus one? There's two of them. How about for the y's? There's six on top versus three on the bottom. Where do I have more y's? Top. So I put the base top. By how many? Six versus three. There's an extra three on top. And then where do I have more Z's, top or bottom? Top. By how many more? Just that extra one. You don't have to put it in there. So some people will have a big fraction bar and some people will have middle fraction bar. Now you might be saying, why should I worry about this if I can do it this way? The only reason why I say that is because we're only in section 5.1. In the future, I'm going to have this reversed, where you're going to have three X's on top, but you might have seven X's at the bottom. So we do not like to do three minus seven and write this as a negative four. We don't like negative exponents, period. So we're going to learn how to get rid of negative exponents. So this method of asking the two questions makes life much easier. But for right now, you can do what the book is, top exponent minus bottom exponent like this. But in the future, maybe you wanna get used to asking the two questions. Right?